Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be looking at by going back to the Chicago Blackhawks after looking at Patrick Kane from the Chicago Blackhawks and trading him to a whole bunch of places in the land and getting the response from people in the comment section. Woo! Wow. It is amazing the discrepancy between many people. Some people would just love the idea. Some people hate the idea. Uh, it was a fascinating, and we're still going. I'm still commenting with people in the comment section about Patrick King going here and there and the other thing. Of course, cap space is always a big issue, and we looked at that as well. And today we're going to stick with Chicago. We're going to go with Jonathan Taze and some of the comments he made uh, with uh, in the Athletic from Pro Hockey Rumors. Interesting indeed. Uh, Chicago definitely looks like they're rebuilding, don't they? To bring that off for picks. Uh, the, the, John, or, uh, Doc, Kirby Doc. Sorry, I do this one take. No editing because I want to spend more time talking to you guys than all that editing boredom. <laughs> so Kirby Doc also traded for uh, picks. Now... Taves comes out and says a few things about what happened and gives, gives us some insight of what might happen with Taves in the future. Uh, if you're wondering why he would listen to this fine programming, well, we're fairly accurate with our predictions. We had Jabrinka going to Ottawa, and he went to Ottawa. Uh, Goudreau, I, I think I was the only person, we were the only people here at uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network that had Goudreau going as number three team as a possibility of going to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, we seem to be fairly accurate. So sub yourself up, join in, because the most important part is talking to you guys. I love it. I don't think – I think I've learned most about the game, about what's going on in the NHL, about the value of players, talking to just fans. It's so much fun. Uh, so also sub up because you can be part of the NHL Pearl, Pearls of Wisdom show that I generally do with Peyton on the radio, off the wall hockey. Uh, we do shows throughout the summer about free agency, about certain teams, all of those sort of things like that. So sub up and get part of it, man. Love to have you. As far as Jonathan Taves himself, this is what we're going to look at in the video. We're going to look at what he said. See him as a player. What is he? How is he now? Uh, we're going to look at seven teams he may go to and the value that he may have to those teams. When he's going to be traded, what his salary looks like, how do we get it under the cap, all that stuff coming up. All right, let's start with the uh, article in question. It was by Josh Erickson. Uh, he did an interview with Mark, Mark Lazarus from The Athletic. Tay says he doesn't know what his future holds, and for him, the idea of a lengthy rebuild didn't sound appealing. Now, if that doesn't sound appealing, he might not be in the right place. Chicago just traded people way younger than him in Doc and in Debrinkat to bring back draft picks. There's been talk of a rebuild there for a long time, and actually they actually have been rebuilding, but they never really did a tear-down rebuild. I also think that after everything that happened in Chicago and all the darkness and stuff that you know we won't get into much here, that they all they want to bring in some new people that weren't a, weren't part of that and take that get rid of all that energy, at least from a player's perspective moving forward. So that's part of it too, I, I guess. This is just, that's my take on it too. Uh, in the interview, Tay spoke frankly about Chicago's moves since the turn of the calendar year, specifically referencing the team's trades involving Hagel, Debrinkat, and Kirby Talk, calling it unfortunate that it has come to that. Well, come to what? Obviously a deep rebuild, I would say. If anybody disagree with me, comment in the comment section, but... And Doc, specifically, he felt he had under his wing and developed a good mentor relationship with him. Now, with him saying that, 
wouldn't it not say to you, as it says to me, that that is something that he values in the part of a team role right now that he would like to be part of moving forward? So we're going to, when we're looking at the seven teams that he may go to, we're going to take a, that's going to come into play for sure. Um, he loves the idea of coaching with uh, Luke Richardson, and who wouldn't? The guy has been working himself up for a long time. He's been well known all around the league to be the next up and coming coach. But um, regardless, this is a significant crossroads for Taves and the Blackhawks organization, for sure. Considering his decline in production and recent health issues, that's what he has had health issues. We're going to look at that in a second when we look specifically at Jonathan Taves. Very high cap hit of $5.25 million if they retain half. Now, when it gets to the deadline, that would be a little better. Um, it would be 5.25 and retain half of the 5.25, which would be about 2 point something, something like that. So a little easier to handle at the deadline. Now, before we go in here, and this you know seems to have a lot of reasons to think that Jonathan Taves could be moving on. Before we go in here, um, I also think this most likely will happen at the deadline for other reasons. Jonathan Taves will likely want to go to a contender, and that will be known who's going to be the contender a lot more around the deadline. Also, I think other teams are going to want to see, as they talked about with this health issues here, if he's willing, able to bounce back and have a really st solid, strong year before they start, you know, thinking about giving up assets for a guy like Jonathan Taves. So let's look at Jonathan Taves himself as a player. He's 34 years old. He's from Winnipeg, Manitoba, which will have a factor in what the teams were looking at for sure. Um, he is a beast of a, uh, he's won three cups. He's well known as one of the greatest leaders of all time. He devoted himself to Chicago. He played his heart out for Chicago. Um, and, you know, like we said, it recently didn't do very well. 37 points in 71 games last year is not great, but it was a trying year for everybody, even for a great leader like Chicago to go with all the uh, sexual assault stuff and blah, all that ugliness. It was tough, and I don't think we can put too much value on a drop of production based on that. The previous year, he had 60 points, 81 points. Being 34, is he able to replicate that again? We're not sure, and I think that it would be in the best interest of everybody, including him and other teams, that they would see how he does in Chicago before they ever make a move such as this. We already talked about a salary cap situation or, or salary situation at 10 and a half. Again, at the deadline, that would be 5.2 and a half. If all, maybe even a little more, actually. The deadline is over halfway through the season. So a little more is paid out at that time, plus you retain 50%. A little more palatable for a lot of teams out there. So Chicago, what are they going to want? Draft picks, draft picks, draft picks. Prospects if they can find it. They got draft picks for Debrinkat, Kirby Dock, you know, younger players in return if they can find them, stuff like that. They are not looking to win now at all. Uh, it's, you know, with whatever the term is going to be for Bedard, they're, they're tanking, tanking huge, at least management is anyways, to try to get as best draft pick as they possibly can. So let's start off with, the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets. He's from Winnipeg. I don't know. I don't know Jonathan Taze. I don't know how much he would appreciate going back home. But this would be home. And I have them low on the list here for other reasons other than that. They missed the playoffs last year. Are they really that much better this, this year? They do have a new coach in Rick Bonus. But... The reason why they are on the list is, of course, he's from there. Also, the big problem that seems to be permeating out of Winnipeg in all for ways and forms, rumors and such, is that there's a room problem in Winnipeg. And that was vocalized by uh, Lion A when he left. Uh, Truba didn't really have the kindest words to say on his way out either. Um 
very interesting as far as what might be happening there. But I do know that if you want to get all that in check, and it's an opportunity for something to happen where they could get all that in check, Jonathan Taves may be one of the best guys in the league to, to be able to do that. Uh, if there's anybody that can provide more accountability than Jonathan Taze, I don't know who it is. And accountability might be the issue here. Guys like Shifley could probably hugely be affected by a guy like Jonathan Taze. Jean, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, who has kind of indicated he may want to leave, although he's kind of backtracked on that since uh, his agent brought up that he'd like to play in Montreal could be deeply affected by somebody like Jonathan Taves being there. Uh, having a mentor like that would be enormous. And, of course, um, also Kyle Perfetti. Now, they actually would have cap room at this moment to be able to do this deal even before the season started. As I said before, Winnipeg Jets fans, sub yourself up. Tell me what you think about this. I think it's more likely he would wait until the deadline and other teams would too to see how he's going. Also... We all know Winnipeg really does need to help. So does appear to need some help with their defense, and would probably want to use that cap space first on that. Now, later on at the deadline, when he's only two and a half million, and you have injuries, and you're in a playoff spot, and you're really wanting to bring a Jonathan Taze like leadership and energy to your room, it's possible. I'm just saying it's possible. What would you think, Winnipeg Jets fans? How would you like to have a guy like Jonathan Tears, who's won three cups, who's known for team building, who's known for being one of the best team players ever, coming into a situation where that seems to be falling apart a bit in Winnipeg? Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested to hear. First, you got to step yourself up, though, right? Right. Okay. Los Angeles Kings. All right. This is also low on the list. And the main, the main reason why it's low on the list here for LA is, first of all, they don't have very money cap, much cap space now. Not likely at all they would be doing this deal at all at right now for sure. But at the deadline with this team, the way it's built, when they would likely have more cap space and it would cost far less cap to get somebody like him, like Jonathan Taves, I could see it possibly happen. Now, hear me out, LA Kings fans. Hear me out. Quinton Byfield is what it's all about here. I love him. 19 years old. People are saying he's a bust. You're not a bust if you're 19 years old and you're playing in the league and you manage 10 points in 40 games or whatever he did. He looked like he was progressing. He's got some work to do in a lot of areas of his game. No doubt about it. But who better to help out with that than Jonathan Taze, who already said that it is something that he values to do in Kirby Doc to take be a mentor for players. Now, you already have NJ Kopitar to do something of that nature. Is there anything wrong with having more guys like that in a room to do that? Um, and not only that, the depth they'd have up the middle would be insane. He brings lots of cups, lots of leadership, everything that you want in a player. And at the deadline, we will see if those health issues are behind him, how he's playing, how he's motivated, all of those sort of things like that, taking into account he's going to be on a really bad team in Chicago. And also, he has a no-movement clause, of course, so it's not going to cost all that much to give up here. Uh, he really is going to have he, – he would have to agree to the deal to begin with. Chicago really wouldn't have all that much to leverage in the deal. And L.A. has tons of prospects and picks and stuff like that that they could use for the year, see how they do, and then, you know, work on something at the end of the year. If not, you head on your way. And thanks for helping out, Mr. Byfield. Now, if Byfield is crushing it and he's already pushing Philip Dano for that second spot, this deal is off the table for sure. I doubt very much they would do something like this. But tell me what you think, LA Kings fans. Taking all that into consideration, Jonathan Taze at the deadline. Sub yourself up to my YouTube channel and let me know. I'll talk to you. Oh, I'll talk to you. All right. Vegas Golden Knights. 
and I know I'm going to get slammed for this. This is the most intriguing one of the bunch. You have no cap room. You already had the trade patch already. Why are we going to go out and get a Jonathan Taves? All those sort of things like that. Well, first of all, like, I, like I've already said through this video, and you've listened to the whole video, I'm sure. Jonathan Taves, this likely would be happening at the deadline. If you want to know if Taves is available, go to the beginning of the video and check it out. Um, this would be happening at the deadline. I also have mentioned that the greatest value for getting a Jonathan Taves, assuming he's doing still well and his health issues look like they're behind him by the deadline, is to mentor somebody like Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel has really been his own mentor his whole career. He hasn't had that really solid, been a great, one of the greats of all time, amazing leadership kind of mentorship throughout his career. Imagine Jonathan Taze and how he would rub off on Eichel, um, how he could help out Jack Eichel. Um, by the deadline, of course, now you're talking about the cap room here. By the deadline, things change. Injuries happen. Uh, you you put players down in the minors and you slowly accumulate cap space. Jonathan Taves would be at about $5.5 million come the deadline. Chicago retains half. You're looking at $2.5 million. Maybe Patrick Nolan is part of it. If he can get out of his life, like career injury problems that he's having, or maybe he's already on IR. You give up a draft pick or a prospect or what have you because Chicago's really not going to have that much leverage here as Jonathan Taves would have to agree to it. With him wanting to uh, seeming to relish the role of a mentor, who better to mentor than a guy like Jack Eichel who's got as much talent as he has? This team could, I think, I think Vegas is going to be a lot better than people think. This year, I think Eichel is going to be a lot better than people think this year. And I really, it's a really good possibility Jonathan Taze could see a role here if Patrick Nolan is used in the trade or is on IR for the third line center spot and a mentorship for Eichel. Tell me what you think, Vegas fans. Would you like a three cup winner, beast of a player, one of the greatest leaders of all time who? We are hoping, come the deadline, has shown that his, his health issues are behind him. He's ready to play. He's never going to be what he was before, but he can still be a fantastic player for a team. Comment in the comment section. Sub yourself up and let me know. All right, Boston Bruins. That's right, the Boston Bruins. Now, this deal, I think, would have be completely in contingent with whether Krejci is going to come back or not. They're, we don't know. We're not sure. There's been rumors of it, but, I mean, it's getting closer and closer to the deadline and not a word as of yet. I believe if Krejci were to come back, this deal would likely not happen at the deadline at all. Cap space, again, as I've talked all the time all, through all of this, is true. By the time the trade deadline comes around, teams have the opportunity to make some room by the deadline to be able to do something like this. Tampa Bay was in cap hell at the beginning of last year. And by the deadline, they were able to pick up Hagel and Paul. So they were able to pick up some very important players and stay under the cap. Any team can do it if, we, if, you, if you do it intelligently. And if they don't get Krejci and they're in a playoff spot, what would you think of Jonathan Taves? in a third-line role at center, helping somebody like Pavel Zaka, who through his career has really underdeveloped. Having a guy like Taser could help him out in a big time, I would say. Now, having Bergeron already would. Imagine the leadership on this team. Mind-blown. Marshawn, Bergeron, Taves. <clears throat> how many cups, how many playoff wins? It would be cray-cray. And... Boston's going for it now. I mean, the window is almost shut already. So, I don't know. It just feels like it's a possibility here. Tell me what you think, Boston fans, especially if Krejci doesn't come back. Who knows? Injury issues come up, all of those sort of things like that. Would you like to see Jonathan Taves in the black and gold? Sub yourself up to my channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know.
All right, we're getting close. Top three teams now. The next one, New Jersey Devils. Now, I think the first thing people are going to say here with the New Jersey Devils, who has about $8 million in cap space right now and still has to sign Jesper Bratt, which was probably going to eat up most, if not all of that. It likely wouldn't happen now, and I've mentioned this throughout the video, that this would only happen if New Jersey is in a playoff spot or, close, or you know, at least looking like a contender by the deadline. Now, me personally, I don't think that's out of the question here. Um, Andre Palat already is going to bring a lot of leadership and cup experience, but Jack Hughes is ready to bounce this year, I believe. 21 years old, he had more than a point a game last year. At 22, you don't think he's going to get better? I think it's likely going to be. Jesper Bratt will get signed. He had a beast of a year. He's only 23. These, they're, they're, Dawson Mercer probably will get better. Nico Heischer's uh, fantastic. And a guy like Jonathan Taves could move out Halla to the wing. And he's already expressed his uh, he, that he likes to be a mentor for guys like Kirby Doc. Could you get a better mentor here? Isn't it? Would it not be time for Hughes and Heischer to rub elbows with one of the greats of all time? One of the greatest leaders of all time. How much value would that give to this organization? Now, this is assuming he puts his health issues behind him. Uh, you're going to ask about cap space after Brat is signed. By the deadline, injuries happen. You move players in and out build cap space all the way up into the deadline. Every team does it. Jonathan Taze would be a five and a half million uh, as far as what's already paid out, maybe even more than that, actually. And Chicago retains. New Jersey has tons of prospects and picks. And if he's willing to go to New Jersey, there's a really good chance that Chicago doesn't have all that much leverage and could move him in a situation where Taves could actually be used here for quite some time. If he's still able to keep going for the next year, the next year, and the next, you know, maybe two, three years down the road, this could be absolutely enormous for the New Jersey Devils. He still is a great defensive player. And as long as his health issues are behind him and he shows it, he puts up some pretty darn good offense too. I really love this play. I would definitely strongly consider it if I were the New Jersey Devils. Tell me what you think, New Jersey Devils fans. Having Taves play, if Andre Johans is there, or, or Tatar, you could move Heischer down here, let Taves play with a guy like Mercer. I mean, all the people, all the players, all the young players, he can help you know, learn how to be a playoff performer, learn how to be a great leader, learn how to be a winner. Nobody better for it than Taves. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Sub yourself up and let me know, Devils fans. All right, next, the Calgary Flames. And actually, I think I, now that I talked about it, I should probably put New Jersey ahead of Calgary here. But the reason why I bring it up is a pair. I, I've, I heard several times last year that Calgary was already asking questions about Jonathan Tays. And Mr. Sutter, I know, would be killing to have Jonathan Tays on the Calgary Flames. To have that type of attitude, that type of personality, that type of leadership, that type of winner to do all anything you have to to win on a Sutter team. You asked him, he'd be like, get him, get him, get him now. Get him right now. I don't care about how old he is or find the cap space, whatever you got to do. Now, at the deadline with Jonathan Huberto, Elias Lindholm, uh, and remember also, got to bring this up, Jonathan Taze is from Winnipeg which isn't too far from Calgary. You'd be getting, you know, around, you'd still be around the home base a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a ways, but it's not too far. And he would have an opportunity as well here to be a mentor to some young people that are coming up in the organization with Connor Zari and Jacob Pelche, Pelche Dylan Dubé, guys like that. I just have a feeling that he would relish having a coach such as Sutter. They kind of, to me, they have the same sort of mind with each other. And the challenge of taking over an or with an organization that lost two of their big stars. I, I think 
Taze is a guy who want, who still wants to prove himself at what he can be. I think he may relish the challenge here. If Calgary's in a playoff spot at the time, and um, you know they possibly could be going one time here for a big go. If Huberto hasn't signed by then, if uh, Uyghur, who they got, of course, from Florida, also hasn't signed by then, this might be their one year. And maybe Tay says, let's go, let's do it. Let's do it. May, and for Calgary, in Calgary's respect, possibly bringing in somebody like Jonathan Taze, a legend like that, might help Jonathan Huberto and those guys to see that Calgary is willing to win. They're willing to win now. And they get to play with possibly one of the greatest leaders of all time. So this had more to do with rumors that I've heard in the past that they were willing to talk already with Jonathan Taves. Like the last year or two, I've heard it, I don't know, five or six times from different sources. So I don't know if that would change at a deadline if they were in a position to win, bringing in a great leader and cup winner like Taves. I just feel like they may do it. Just, just feels right. Tell me what you think, Calgary Flames fans. How would you like Jonathan Taves there in your sweater? Comment in the comment section. Sub yourself up and let me know. Finally, I got Carolina Hurricanes. And I think this probably goes off the board. Most people wouldn't think of the Carolina Hurricanes in this spot. He would be moving to the uh, moving to maybe you know nowhere near his home base. But I don't know if that's really all that important to him at all. I do know that I do believe that Jonathan Taze would relish the idea of playing with a coach like Rob Brindamore. And Carolina, who already brought in Brent Burns, fantastic leader, seems to have put huge value this year and uh, in bringing in veteran character winner type players such as Max Pacioretty and Brent Burns. Neither of which I don't believe Max Pacioretty has won a cup, and I know Brent Burns hasn't. However, Jonathan Taze, you couldn't get a better example of that. And would he relish the idea of mentoring guys like Jesper Kokaniemi? I think he would. He gets to play with a very solid team that's going to be a cup contender. He could, they could fit him under the cap at the deadline, no problems, I would imagine. They have lots of prospects and picks to be able to send the other way. And I don't know, when I watched Carolina last year, it, it just screamed to me that they were missing that guy that can make you believe. And I don't know if there was ever, there, maybe Sidney Crosby, you know, Bergeron, there are a couple guys in this league that seem to do that better than anybody of this generation. Jonathan Taves, I believe, is one of those guys that can be there for support of what Brenda Moore is saying and saying, you know what? I've been there. I've been there. I want it. I know what to do in this situation when you're down here and down there and how not to get too high, too low, all of those sort of things like that. I've been there. I don't know. I just see this as a great possibility that he would go here. And I think it's possible he might even sign another contract after that for lesser money if he really enjoyed his time there. Great mentorship guy for Seth Jarvis, Kokaniemi, and anybody else that might be coming up, Drury, all of those guys. He relishes the uh, role of, a mem of being a mentor. What do you think, Carolina fans? Could you see Jonathan Taze in your uniform come deadline? I know, like, even if you may have cap issues and all of that, by the deadline, five and a half million will half his cap will already be paid out, actually, more than half. Chicago retains half, and it probably won't cost you too much in assets as he's got all the leverage and Chicago has very little because he has a no movement clause. He can go wherever he wants to go. Okay, that's my full 42. Those are all the teams that I think possible would be most likely to be in on Jonathan Taves if he's available at the trade deadline. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. 
Sub yourself up. You can be part of the NHL Perlo Wisdom Show that I do with Peyton on the radio and my own. I go on live about once or twice a week in the summer, and we talk about all this stuff. And you can tell me all what you want to say. If you are a person who um, gets offended by non-personal issues, it's probably not for you. It's a little bit of a, you know, your information for you. But if you don't, if you're not. Because we have it out sometimes. Sometimes there's disagreements and it doesn't get personal, but you can say whatever you want to say. I'd love to see you. I'd love to have you. I can't wait to comment in the comment section with you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.